and welcome ladies and gentlemen to our candlelit carol service. Uh, the wind has blown all sorts of people in tonight and you're all very welcome with the addition still of the, the trees that are left over from the Christmas tree festival. So our church is looking particularly attractive but as I say, particularly for yourselves. <laughs> Christmas time we celebrate the coming of Christ, God with us into the world, or seen from ages past reflected in our opening words from some of the ancient scriptures. The oracle of him who hears the words of God and knows the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty, falling down with his eyes uncovered. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. We have come together to celebrate the great festival of Christmas. In this service, we hear and receive the good news of God's coming amongst us in the birth of Jesus Christ. Through the season of Advent, we have recalled the light of Christ come amongst us with hope, joy, peace and love. And we anticipate his coming again in glory. More words from the ancient scriptures. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the fields exult and everything in it. Then shall the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes to rule the earth. But at the beginning of our service, lest we forget that he was born to poverty, we remember at this season all who are hungry or cold. Lest we forget that he became a refugee we remember the stranger and the lonely among us. And lest we forget that he felt the pain of life and death, we remember the ill, the anxious and the sad. And because he came for our salvation, let us in heart and mind go once again to Bethlehem to hear the message of the angels and worship afresh the Son of God. Heavenly Father, you came amongst us in Jesus Christ, the light of the world, a light no darkness can quench. Darkness is not dark to you, and night is as bright as the day. Let your light shine in the darkness, and fill your church with the glory. Fill our hearts with the light of your love, we pray, as we worship Christ our Lord. Amen. The service will proceed without announcement. We're going to stand together to sing the first carol, number 19. Please join in at verse 2. Thank you. Let's stand.
the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Bethlehem, Ephraim, 
Though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, but then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. 
But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her.
I've had enough. This would try the patience of a saint, and I don't think I'm a saint. Just a man of principle, just an ordinary mortal, minding my own business, joiner and general household repairs, trying to do my best with the gifts God gives me. Behold the handyman of the Lord. Folk appreciate good worksmanship. On the whole, they respect me, a solid member of the community. I never set out to be clever, but want to do what's right. And now this, what will people say? Mary, my intended, she's going to have a baby. It's not mine, it can't be mine. What will people say? Nazareth is a small town. Everyone knows everyone else's business. This isn't going to be good for trade. I'll be a laughing stock. I'll call the wedding off. Quietly, of course. That's the best thing to do. Joseph. That's me. Joinery and household repairs. Prompt servers and cash terms. Who called? I did. Who are you? An angel of the Lord. I must be dreaming. You are. I must be getting back to work. Joseph, will you listen? You are as thick as two short planks. It's likely in my line of work. Well, what do you want? You are a descendant of David? Yes, you see, David begot Solomon, and Solomon Rehoboam, who begat Abijah, who begat Azar, who begat Jehoshaphat. Thank you. Do not be afraid to take Mary to be your wife. But... It's for it is by the Holy Spirit that, he is, that she has conceived. Well, I never... I know. It was an immaculate conception. She will give birth to a son, and you shall name him... Jehoshaphat! No. Jesus. What kind of a name is that? Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. What? All our family? All the people in Nazareth? All God's people? All the people in Paul? One little baby? Yes, and so it will come true. What the Lord said through the prophet, a virgin will become pregnant and will give birth to a son, and he will be called Emmanuel. But you told me to call him Jesus. I can't understand all this. I'm good with my hands, not with words, just a manual worker. Emmanuel is a special name. It means God is with us. What? With the workers? With the people of Nazareth, with the people of Paul, with ordinary folk like me, God with us. That's good enough for me. Mary, Mary, we're going to have a baby.
Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Creus was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town to Naz of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem in the, in the town of David because he belonged to the house in line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, in the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest rooms available for them. living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, 
glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The Journey of the Magi by T.S. Eliot. A cold coming we had of it, just the worst time of the year for a journey, and such a long journey. The ways deep and the weather sharp, the very dead of winter. And the camels, galled, sore-footed, refractory, lying down in the melting snow. There were times we regretted the summer palaces on slopes, the terraces and the silken girls bringing sherbet. Then the camel men cursing and grumbling and running away and wanting their liquor and women. And the night fires going out and the lack of shelters. And the cities hostile and the towns unfriendly. And the villages dirty and charging high prices. 
a hard time we had of it. At the end, we preferred to travel all night, sleeping in snatches, with the voices singing in our ears, saying that this was all a folly. Then at dawn, we came down to a temperate valley, wet below the snow line, smelling of vegetation, with a running stream and a water mill beating the darkness, and three trees on the low sky, and an old white horse galloped away in the meadow. Then we came to a tavern with vine leaves over the lintel, six hands at an open door, dicing for pieces of silver, and feet kicking the empty wineskins. But there was no information, and so we continued. And arriving at evening, not a moment too soon, finding the place, it was, you might say, satisfactory. All this was a long time ago, I remember, and I would do it again. But set down this, set down this. Were we led all that way for birth or death? There was a birth, certainly. We had evidence and no doubt. I had seen birth and death, but had thought they were different. This birth was hard and bitter agony for us, like death, our death. We returned to our places, these kingdoms, but no longer at ease here in the old dispensation with an alien people clutching their gods. I should be glad of another death.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind, the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Who do you listen to? There are so many voices sometimes surrounding us, it's difficult to know who to listen to, isn't it? We get bombarded in life by ideas, by stories, by advertising, by noise in so many different ways on our TV screens, the radio, papers, email, WhatsApp, Messenger, Instagram, Twitter, and so on and so on. And in many different voices, with diff so many different voices, with so many different views of society, different thoughts on what's going on around us. Life can be confusing and sometimes we can get information overload. So who do we listen to? Often in life it seems that the people who get listened to are the ones who shout the loudest. But is there another way. When we're confused in life, we will go to those we trust to seek counsel and get advice about the right way forward. When we have questions, we often rely on the advice of others. When we're faced with unprecedented situations, as we've all been burdened with over the last couple of years, we seek wise counsel or advice. And we hope that we can trust those who are in authority to give us that wise counsel. The Christmas story is full of advice being given. Our traditional readings almost all contain someone being told something or given advice. From the prophets of the Old Testament to Isaiah and Micah prophesying of a future Messiah to the angels not telling Mary, not only telling Mary and Joseph, but also the shepherds of the birth of the king. And then the message comes to the Magi in the brightness of an unusual star. And each of the characters in the story of the Nativity stopped to listen to the message that was given to them. Into the messiness of their lives, a message slipped in to change their lives forever. The scene of the Nativity has become something quite cute and lovely to look at. Nativity plays performed by small children, started by St. Francis of Assisi, have now become more and more sparkly. 
with angels and donkeys and even if you have lo- watch love actually an octopi in the stable crib scenes started by the italians are more and more stylized to display a very european scene with a, a very angelic looking figures and a very together young couple even if they are in a stable But these traditions and others we have at Christmas sanitise the reality of the Christmas story. It really was quite messy, dirty and difficult for those involved. The young mother giving birth to her first child, not very hygienically, but in the place where the animals were kept. Her young husband beside her trying to work out what was going on. And then the shepherds, the local outcasts, more used to spending time with the sheep than their families, running down the hill to see what was happening. And what about Herod, Paul, the jealous king, who, if we continue the story, decides to try to get rid of the new baby in the only way that he knows, through murderous acts. It's not neat and pleasant, this story. But then, life isn't neat and pleasant, is it? Life is messy at times. Most of us struggle in different ways with life, whether our finances, our mental health, our relationships, our work-life balance, or our lack of it. The list goes on and on. Life is complicated in so many different ways. And the simple message of Christmas is that God stepped into the midst of the mess of life to guide us, to comfort us, and above all, to redeem us. It means that we can look at life in a completely new way. God stepping into the mess of life means that he absolutely understands all the dynamics of life that we face. And if he understands us and our lives, then he is the only one who's actually worth listening to. Our reading from the prophet Isaiah, right at the beginning, speaks of Jesus coming as, among other things, the wonderful counsellor. A counsellor is one who gives wise counsel. He is the one who is totally trustworthy to help and guide us. A wise counsellor is certainly someone who we should listen to. And when we look at the life of Jesus, we see just that. We see his counsel to those he came across, his wonderful words of wisdom when he spoke not only to those in authority, but to the everyday men, women and children who followed him. He leads his disciples in service by example. His life speaks out of who he was and what he came to achieve. This Jesus is the light that shines in the darkness. This light is the thing that will get us through the darkness and messiness of life. So this Christmas, don't listen to the voices that tell you what you need to have bought or cooked or wrapped this Christmas. It's not about providing the perfect day or buying the best gifts. You don't have to have brilliant photos on your social media feed or cook a 12-course tasting menu. You don't have to be perfect this Christmas because the only thing that is perfect, the only thing that we need to be perfect is Jesus. The one, the only one who offers true, perfect, untainted counsel and wisdom. The Son of God. So in prayer, in quiet contemplation, in reading his word, in faithful Christian life, we can deepen our relationship with that Messiah. We can hear his word and we can follow his call on our lives. It need be no more complicated this Christmas than to rest for a moment in quiet adoration of the Christ child. May God bless you with his wise counsel this Christmas and into the coming year. Amen. We're going to stand to sing again. It's not carol 11, it's carol 9, the holly and the ivy.
Let us pray. And in these few quiet, brief, quiet moments, let's open our ears and our hearts to what God may be speaking to us. As we sang earlier, how silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. And so as we have been reminded in readings and carols, May and in Lucy's message to us, May we hear God's voice speaking quietly. May we hear his voice speaking to us in the noise and the busyness. In the clamour for our attention, may we be able to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we have so many things to give thanks for. The blessings of this life, the blessings to come, the gifts that you've given us, the world that you have made. And we are conscious that there are those, as we have said, who will be hungry or cold, who will be lonely, who may be without shelter. In a world that is broken in many places, we pray for your peace. We continue to pray for the peoples of Ukraine. And Lord, we pray for peace with all people, that people may be free to worship. We pray for Christians in many parts of the world that cannot publicly and openly worship. We pray for our brothers and sisters in India and in China in so many other places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, you have poured on us the gifts of eternal life, the hope of heaven, and yet we are conscious of those who are sad at this time as on the news has brought us the bad news of so many lost lives in the last week and two, for the families in Solihull that have lost their children, for those who lost in war, in famine, for the, disaster, for the loss of life in Jersey, just for those who quietly mourn and remember those that have gone before. Encourage us, we pray, with your life, with your word and your message. May this Christmas time be a time of renewal of hope and of joy and of peace in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in a brief moment of quiet, those things that are particularly on our heart and mind, let's in the quiet, just offer them to God. Maybe just by focusing on one of the candles or one of the trees or on the cross or at the front, something that just focuses us and we bring with that focus those whom we love. Lord. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we draw our prayers together as we say in the traditional words, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. You probably have already spotted that in fact our final carol is number 10, <coughs> Hark the Herald Angels Sing, we stand to sing. special service. Um, thank you so much all for joining us and a reminder that uh, we are here on Christmas Eve at four o'clock for the Christingle service, 11.30 for the midnight service and then on Christmas Day, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock for a family communion service for Christmas morning. So thank you all. Let's just finish with the blessing. May the wisdom of God Speak to our hearts and minds this Christmas time. And may the light of Christ, which darkness cannot overcome, light up our lives. And may the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you. And we remain with you and those whom you love and pray for, now and always. Amen. Amen.